Now, if you're coming back from injury, it can be all too tempting to jump straight back in and return to full running. Frustration is understandable, but actually following a well thought out and structured plan will, in the long run, see you coming back to full fitness far quicker. So allow me to introduce to you the run-walk method. Today, I'm gonna to be running you through and guiding you through the run-walk method, and also a week-by-week -week plan that you can follow to get you back to full running. Why walk? Well, the run-walk method can help get you running again quicker. It might sound like an oxymoron, but it is tried, tested, and prescribed by coaches and physios alike. If you've been out from running for a while due to injury, and by a while I mean three months or more, then you're pretty much going to be starting from scratch. But if you want an idea of where to start from in relation to how long you've had off, well, we've actually got a recent video on that, on how to return to running from injury. And whilst you're over there, why not subscribe to the channel so you can see more videos from us too. Now, the reason we don't jump straight in with running is because your body won't be ready for the stresses as your bones, joints, ligaments, basically all your soft tissue needs time to adapt and get stronger. This needs to happen before you can start increasing your mileage. So the reason we include walking is because it's slightly less dynamic and involves less impact per foot strike when compared to running. If you're new to this method, I can understand that you might find this a little frustrating that you're not able to go straight in on full running, but actually by doing this, you can start to control your effort. You still get the same endorphins, and also you might find that you're able to go further or longer than you ordinarily would at this stage in your rehab. And also let's not forget you're changing things up mentally and also mixing things up physically by going from this run to walk. Also, if you are new to running or you're coming back after a rather long layoff due to injury, then actually all this can be slightly less intimidating. And as a result, you're a little more motivated knowing that each target is that bit more manageable. Obviously, you can go by feel with the amount and ratio of run to walk, but do be wary that by doing too much too soon, you could end up continually taking two steps forward and one back, or worse, one forward and two back. The idea is to gradually and consistently increase, so following a proven plan is the surest way to reach your target. Before we delve into the example program, you still need to gauge your effort of the running and the walking. The walking needs to be brisk, ideally still using your arms as you would in running, and try to keep your cadence within 20 RPM of your normal running cadence. It's a different type of walk to a walk recovery that you might do between hard efforts on the track or an amble into town. The run, when starting back, also needs to be kept really easy. To a jog, ideally, once you're back to being able to run for continuous periods of time, then you can start looking at increasing your pace. And I probably don't need to say this, but if you experience any pain, then it's important you skip a run walk day. And if that pain continues to hurt, then it's probably time to seek advice from a health professional instead of continuing and potentially causing any further or even lasting damage. Right there, it's probably time to run through the plan. And for the first eight weeks, we're actually just going to increase the length of these by adding one more rep each time. And actually the ratios here, are all in minutes of run to walk. So for the first three weeks, do a maximum of three run-walk sessions per week of approximately 30 minutes in duration. Start with the first week alternating one minute run, three minutes walk. Week two, as one minute run, two minutes walk. Week three, two minutes run, two minutes walk. Moving into weeks four to eight, you can start to include a fourth run per week if you like. Now building from around 35 to 45 minutes in total duration, still no intensity. So week four has four minutes run, one minute walk. Week five, six minutes run, one minute walk. Week six, seven minutes run, one minute walk. Week seven, eight minute run, one minute walk. Week eight, nine minute run, one minute walk. By this point, you're racking up some good duration, but don't get carried away just yet. You should start edging up the total duration of three of the run walks to around 50 to 60 minutes and start including a single shorter 30 to 40 minute continuous run per week. So for the run walks, week nine, seven minutes run, 45 seconds walk. Week 10, eight minutes run, 45 seconds walk. Week 11, nine minutes run, 45 seconds walk. 
Now, by week 12, you can start running continuously, but knock it down to three shorter and steady runs of 30 minutes. And from here, we can actually start to increase the number of runs that we're doing per week and even start to include a little bit more intensity or some faster running into one structured workout per week. But do be really careful here because we've built things up so gradually to get to this point. So don't start increasing the number of runs or including too much intensity too soon. Patience now will pay off in the long run. And feel free to use this plan as a bit of a template, but whatever you do, make sure you keep it to a nice steady progression and you'll find that you're back to your old running self in just a few months time. If you have enjoyed today's video, make sure you give it a nice thumbs up and like. If you'd like to see more from GTN, you can click on the globe and subscribe to the channel. And if you'd like to see a couple more videos, what is VO2 max? You can see that by clicking just up here. And if you'd like to see how to get back into running, you can see that by clicking just down here.